Hey guys, welcome to episode number 39 for the Trainwreck series. Tonight we're going to be uh, talking a little bit on kickoff about the should I have kids conversation. So Sean was just asking me before we uh, went live about the Canadian election. And um, if you guys don't know, we're voting today for a new leader. Unfortunately, Justin Trudeau is still leading the polls. I was, um, I was looking at the hashtags trending on uh, Twitter. You know, um, one was... Um, Trudeau list Tuesday and the other one was you know candidate votes or something like that so there's some interesting ones there but I but I started clicking through and I like overwhelmingly all of the people voting for the liberals or the socialist party which is the new democrat party which is led by Jagmeet Singh it's mostly women they're younger women they're actors artists you know stuff like that um people just don't get it man it's just you know, like I wish people had some foresight to see beyond the rainbows and butterflies and the good hair and, you know, the virtue signaling of the politics to understand that in order to facilitate free programs, the money's got to come from somewhere. I mean, you can either print it, which puts the country in debt, or you can tax the crap out of people. And at some point they will leave. Um, it's just the reality of the, of the way the world yeah. works, right? What's We're your, what's your view down there? Because, the I mean, you see our, our, our Canadian shit show, I guess, today. Like, what does it look yeah. like down there? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sorry to say that down here it looks like a lot of nothing because we don't pay much attention. Most people don't pay much attention to, to Canada. Yeah. I've been paying attention because I got friends up there like you and I got some, some other friends up there. And it, Justin Trudeau, uh, he does – we are aware of him and how – he is such a hard leftist and how he is, how would you, how would you say this? He's a blackface enthusiast. I think that's what most people in the U S know about Justin Trudeau, which makes it ironic that one of his proposals is that if he gets reelected, he's going to regulate speech on the internet. So here we have this guy who's been out there making these, these racial statements of a questionable tone. Who's going to tell the rest of us what is, uh, what is acceptable speech. But I understand also that he's had some very damaging fiscal policy for Canada. And, I, and to answer your question, I think most people in America aren't really aware of that part of things. Yeah, well, his, his, his policies have really taxed people a hell of a lot more. Um, and not in a useful way. I mean, we're still running more debt than what we had with the last election. But people like him. He, you know, he's, he's a likable character. Um, most of the votes... I mean, the direction that this country seems to go, and I don't know, you know, what's going to happen for you guys next year with your own election, but the direction that, that we seem to be leading in is uh, tell people you're going to get free stuff, give them some free stuff, um, tax more people, uh, rich people bad, um, you're a victim good, <laughs> vote more for liberal policies than Justin Trudeau because he likes the poor people, he likes the... Uh, people that are uh, victims, you know, the victim mindset. You talked a lot about the victim mindset in your why you should never date a feminist video, right? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the victim mindset. And the reason it doesn't work in relationships is because if a person walks through life with this victim mindset, they need a bad guy. And eventually you're going to be the bad guy. I'm just not a fan of it. I don't know if you've seen Andrew Shear. Have you seen him? No. He's a, he's a big, tall, goofy, dory. like he doesn't look like he could harm a fly. He looks even softer than Justin Trudeau, if you can believe it or not. Um, and he's a conservative leader. So he would be like the Donald Trump of our election. Um, and he's not a bad guy. I mean, but, but he's, but he's held out now like, Oh, he's about, Oh, he's half American. So he won't do what's in the best interest of uh, Canada is one of the arguments I've seen them use, but it's nonsense guys. If you haven't gone out there and vote, um, you know, you can't complain if, uh, it doesn't go your way. So at least get out there and cast a vote before the polls close. Um, tonight's broadcast, we're going to be having the, uh, the, the kid debate, the, should I have kids? Um, I also got a request that I want to read out after we finish that conversation, then we'll move to taking calls. I got Josh screening calls. So I'm going to drop the link to, um, talk to Josh. He's going to make sure your audio is good and you're, and you're solid with the question. But how do you want to approach the, um, you know, the whole, should I have kids question? I'll, I'll start you off with a little story. You want to hear a story? Yeah, go ahead. I love stories. All right. So I, we have this street in Denver, Colorado. It's called Colfax Avenue, and it goes from east to west, and it's 26 miles long. And it is supposedly the longest continuous commercial street in the country. I don't know, but it's a long street, and you can you can drive straight through the center of town with it. And I have a a special place in my heart for Colfax Avenue. I always have very very sentimental about this street. 
And so we have this little tradition in my family. Once a year, when the weather starts to change about this time of year, we will, I will grab my wife and my brother and whatever friends want to come along. And we start at one end of Colfax and we walk to the other end. I live on the west side. So we, yesterday we drove out to the east side, walked all the way back to the west side. And we didn't do all 26 miles because there's a few miles on either end that aren't walkable. But we did roughly 17 miles yesterday. I've done this for several years. And yesterday was our day to walk Colfax. And it was the first day that I had taken my daughter with me. My daughter's 12 years old. She's a girl, obviously. And it was one of those moments that you have as a father, and I'm sure you've had these, Rich, where you just really impressed with the person that your kid is becoming because here's this 12 year old girl that walks 17 miles like a trooper man she didn't whine she didn't complain she didn't talk about her feet hurting she just was there for the ride and she saw things and, and we got to discuss things along the way because it's an interesting street you go through all kinds of different neighborhoods and she thought saw things that um that, aren't really normally a part of her world, like the man with schizophrenia walking down the street, screaming at the sky, you know, that sort of thing that, that a lot of kids would be scared of. And she was just kind of curious about it, but it, it was, it was a moment when I was really proud of her for just being such a trooper and sort of taking on the family ethic that you know, sometimes we do things that are a little difficult and uncomfortable and it's not going to kill you. And it can actually be kind of fun. So have you had these moments with, with your kid? Yeah, I, um, I signed up at a, a dojo for um, Krav Maga, and they do a bunch of other classes like boxing and jujitsu and a few other things. But there's, um, what did she say to me after the first class? She's like, um, I said, you know, we're going to go do another one on uh, Friday night, right? She goes, ah, I don't want to do it, Daddy. It's hard. I'm like, life's hard, sweetheart. It's going to throw curveballs at you. It's going to, it's going to knock you down. Life ain't going to be easy. And, you know, if somebody's going to come and come at you with a gun or a knife, they're not going to say, oh, hold on a second. Let me do this on easy mode because you're a girl. They're going to come at you just as hard as the next guy. So you have to learn how to deal with situations like this, whether you can get out of them, whether you disarm them or how you're going to do it. But I guess there's a lot of kids today that that look to live life on easy mode. And I don't know if that's I don't know where to point the finger at or if I'm pointing and sputtering in, in, in general, whether it's society, whether it's school, whether it's religion, whether whatever it is, you know, parenting. But there's a lot of weak kids that I see out there that haven't got the, uh, the skills to deal with basic stuff. I mean, even things like dealing with how do you, how do you handle rejection? You know, how do you how do you deal with rejection when a girl says no to you sort of thing? I mean, some guys can deal with it. Other guys just lose their mind and they just kind of fly off in a, a weird direction. So. A lot of guys that we've talked to, and we've never actually dedicated an entire episode to this topic of, you know, like the kid sort of thing. So you've got a kid, I've got a kid, uh, you're married, I got divorced, I obviously had a kid while I was married. So like, what's the, what's the debate when it comes to having kids? Should I have them? Should I not have them? I mean, it's a risky proposition in today's world if you live in the West, especially in a state or a province where they hate men, or, you know, family law does not favor fathers, right? Yeah, and I talked to a lot of guys who really struggle with this. And uh, the reason I, I suggested this topic tonight is because a couple of weeks ago you were you posted something on Twitter asking for topic ideas. You want to see what guys were interested in. And this topic came up a couple of times, I think, in that in responses to you. And I see a lot of young guys and you know, even older guys that are struggling with, should I have kids? Should I not have kids? It seems to be something that men struggle with a little more than women. And women will either in my experience they yeah. either know pretty early that they want kids or a lot of them think that they don't and then they hit 30 and then suddenly they do with a very with with urgency but uh, men are a lot more uh, up in the air about it and again, i'll throw a couple stats at you here yeah yeah go ahead just just real quick this was from the uh, the U.S. Census, and this came out earlier this year, uh, just under a quarter of U.S. men between the ages of 40 and 50 are childless, so about 25% of men, and just under 16% of women ages 40 and 50 are childless. So that's a pretty big, pretty big difference there. Well, I think guys that have become a little more aware of their surroundings, if they're watching my stuff and your stuff and they're reading your books, they've come to realize that it's not exactly as easy as they were led to believe to have kids and it's not as safe as they were led to believe to have kids in this environment, which is tough because you're kind of hardwired to pass on your DNA, yeah? Um, 
you know, men are designed to scattered seeds. There's no doubt about it. That's why we make, you know, millions of sperm every month. It's, it's, it's just, you know, what we're designed to do. Um, we have sex in a lot of ways that can't possibly result in a pregnancy too, though. So, you know, the whole kid debate comes into question and a lot of guys think they know what they're up against. I've actually got, you know, I was working on my whiteboard back over there, you know, an hour ago on a video that I'm doing um, on exiting because I get so many coaching calls from guys uh, after the train wreck, right? I got married. Yeah. My wife's leaving me. She's banging Steve from accounting or Kevin from sales. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm out of the house now and things are really bad and I haven't seen my kids and I don't know if I'm ever, ever going to see them again. She wants to move across the country. So um, I'm putting together like some, some some classical steps, some errors that a lot of guys make so at least they can prep a little bit better. But um, I, like I really don't know how to approach the should I have kids question. I mean, you should approach it from the angle of it's very risky. For men, it is very risky. You know, you said earlier that all women seem to want to have kids. And I don't think there's a lot of risk to women to have kids, or is there? Yeah, I think that uh, I think most women want to have the statistics said that I just read you say that most most women are more certain about the question than most men are. Um, it is risky for women because you know we talk a lot about the male side of risk. The female side of risk is that they get stuck or they have a kid with a guy who then leaves them to raise the kid alone because he mm -hmm. goes off and does whatever. And that's a huge burden on hers. It, it's not risk-free for kids. And I certainly have more of the state's resources in their favor, and they certainly have family court in their favor, in their favor. but I don't think any woman would describe that as the ideal situation. I, I think a normal, healthy woman wants a normal, healthy man to partner with and, and raise this child. You know, but a lot of the problems that men face today and some of the things that they're starting to get aware of, and I know that you see this too, is uh, like women see men today as disposable. You know, the narrative that yeah. they've been sold a lot of their lives is you don't need no man. You know, you, you know, yeah. you go girl, you, you go get that degree and you go get that job and pursue the career. And, you know, if you need to, you just go get a, a, a a sperm donor you know you can pick yeah charlie yeah. that's glossy two catalog. scientist that's right. astronaut bodybuilder and have a baby yeah. with charlie right and they never know what this guy looks like but yeah um, it could be barney from the simpsons but he's he's sold as the the astrophysicist be. with a that's built could like be. arnold i just want to i just want to hit on a, a comment that i noticed here uh flowing through my stream yard chat. Um, if you want to join the YouTube chat, there's a join button there. It's like $4.99 for the month. And it really helps us, uh, you know, with the show, um, all of this equipment and lighting and microphones and, you know, the stream yard technology, um, guys participate in the chat. Just hit that. It's, it's $4.99 a month. You can do it right on the channel. So, um, I'm not able to respond to you guys on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere right now, but it distributes to all the platforms. So just how that works heads up um I'm, I'm i'm paying attention to the youtube chat the super chat which uh by the way let me just quickly hit these uh quick one from edder santos thank you sir appreciate that for the ten dollar super chat and uh daniel uh, i guess i'm lucky that i never got married funny i don't feel lucky so that's the regret that a lot of guys sometimes have is they feel lucky because they've never been divorce raped like the guy from work or their brother or their cousin but they also feel like they are missing out how do you reconcile that as a guy? Well, it's funny that that, that comment just popped up. When I, when I talk about this with guys who are really struggling with this question, I ask them this question. I brought this up a couple of weeks ago and it led into, um, I think it's, I think Rolo can, is, this is his idea, the myth of a lonely old man. And, and sort of there's this pressure to commit rather than being comfortable with being alone. But, um, I'll come back to that in a minute. But when I talk to guys about this and they're trying to sort out this question, I usually approach it as, okay, imagine that you're 50 years old and career's going well because most guys orient themselves around their career. So 50 years old, you're looking for some comfort in your career. Things are going well. Now imagine no kids around. Is that a problem for you? And I would say, and right in line with these statistics, that about 25% of the guys, so I'm just guessing, off, you know, guessing, 25% of the guys will stop and they'll think about it. And that's what's interesting about this question is guys will actually get quiet for a minute, for a second while they're thinking about this question. And probably 25% will say, no, that, that doesn't matter to me. And probably 75% somehow arrive at the solution that, yeah, actually that would be a problem for me. And then I'll ask, okay, flash forward another 20 years, you're 70 years old. There's no grandkids around. You're probably retired. 
is that going to be a problem for you? It's another clarifying question. And then flash forward to 90 and you are living, if you're still alive, there's a good chance you're living in whatever facility you're living in while you're waiting to die. Would you rather increase the odds that you're going to have some family around or are you just okay with whatever staff is there? And so these are clarifying questions. They're tough questions. And, um, Getting back to the myth of the lonely old man, I know that I, I don't disagree at all with the assertion that there is a societal pressure that men are supposed to fall in line with the feminine social order, right? We were supposed to become the, the plow horses and we we're supposed to, you know, no, no argument there. That doesn't mean that this isn't a useful question. And it doesn't mean that it's, you know, that it's a question that you shouldn't ask yourself independent of the culture and nobody's gonna get any clarity on this question by getting angry at the question just because this is what society sort of pushes and when i ask this question i'm not looking for any outcome other than the honest outcome for that individual guy i was just i was just kind of marinating on that while you were talking i was thinking about it from a glass half full perspective more of the devil's advocate so let's um I have a friend that's got a couple of daughters that have both been through university. Um, they're in their late twenties, one's late twenties, one's early thirties. And, um, he never saw this coming, but they both became devout feminists going through the university system. And he's really frustrated that, um, you know, he, he put everything into it that he could raising these two girls to be useful, smart, witty, yep. you know, beautiful women that, uh, you know, now have an education, but they, quite literally always play the victim card. The patriarchy is bad, men bad. And he's a good dude. You know, he's a solid man. You know, he paid for the education. So it's like when he hears things like the patriarchy and men are bad, he's like, well, who paid for your school, right? Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of pushback from that sense. There's a lot of frustration. A lot of guys have expressed like, you know, what's the point in having kids when I don't even have the ability to decide how to raise my kids. The state can take them away from me. If I get divorced and my wife um, alleges domestic violence, even if it doesn't happen, I have a guy that's a friend of mine that's um, in an entrepreneur's group of mine and he got divorced or he's getting divorced. His wife cheated on him and um, they were having a conversation one day and he, and he called her a liar. He pointed at her, he raised his voice and he said, you're a liar, right? And she called the cops on him. Um, and it came very close to a DV charge, which have been, which would have been very problematic for him, which would have been very problematic through the divorce uh, process and family law. Um, so it's very, very risky, right? And if you get yourself yeah. in a scenario like that and you got young kids and you're trying to do the, and you did nothing wrong, you know, your wife cheated on you, you did nothing wrong. And you end up in a scenario where you, you could actually like be put in, in your parents' basement paying uh, a good chunk of your paycheck to alimony and, and child support and watching your ex-wife alienate you from your own children and telling them what a bad person you are, right? Like this, is, like this is a real risk that a lot of guys see. It is. You and I talked to somebody not too long ago that was in that very scenario, living in his mom's basement, rebuilding things. But I'll see your devil's advocate and I'll raise you one yeah. that just because you have kids doesn't mean you're going to have good kids. Sometimes a kid is born with a bent wire in their head and true? there is no guarantee that this is going to bring meaning to your life. This can be, in fact, actually, I started out the first scenario in the tactical guide to women is somebody who uh, had is a couple of kids and one of them really wound up to be a lot of trouble and very expensive. This guy had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on rehab for this kid and, uh, you know, no end in sight with it. So, you know, it, it is risky all the way around. So why would you make that trade off? Well, let's, let's keep raising the stakes here. Let's, let's keep playing the devil's advocate. I'm, I'm just going to post your book here in the chat, Sean. If you guys haven't grabbed the tactical guide to women, definitely grab a copy. It is a very useful read. Sean is a clinical psychologist that wrote it. If you're new to this uh, broadcast series, um, I know quite a few guys that don't have any kind of relationship with their kids whatsoever. They're estranged. Uh, they've had a falling out. They can't reconcile. Um, they spent, you know, sometimes 20, 30 years of their lives, uh, nurturing and building uh, children, which is really for the purpose. I mean, for the sole purpose for men anyway, I think they look at it as passing on their seed, passing on their DNA, like leaving a legacy, if you will. 
you know, there's this term that gets th thrown around a lot, patriarchs, right? Um, and they just don't have a relationship with their kids. So they end up being the lonely old man anyway, even though they father children yeah. and paid for everything. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of ways that things could go wrong. You know, the flip side, it, it, it can be great. I mean, when you get around family gatherings and there's children running around and they're full of laughter and joy and, you know, they're comical and they're playing jokes, <laughs> there's also some rotten ones too that'll just grab a handful of sand from the sand pit, walk up to you and throw it in your face or your drink for no reason, right? <laughs> right. Um, it could go any way. It goes up or down. It's you know, it's it's a debate that could literally go on for hours. I think that if you're going to do it, though, you need to approach it from an intelligent perspective. I think that you have to understand. You really have to get your head around the way the world is today if you're going to take the risk and understand that it is a risky proposition. Half of marriages end in divorce, and that doesn't count the other half of people that are still married. We don't know if they're unhappily married or not. I mean, or maybe they're too much of a coward to untie the knot or they can't untie the knot or they can't get better options. Um, but most marriages fail at the end of the day. It's very difficult well, the, to manage. Or the poor guy who is, yeah, the poor guy who's in a marriage that's miserable and he's done the math and he figures, well, it's, it's cheaper to stay than it is to go. And so he just he just runs out the clock. Right. Well, I'll give you a couple a couple of positive things here. You know, One you touched on is, is just that boisterousness and having having the kids around the family gathering, it's, it, it's an indescribable joy. And I always think of the end of the Godfather, that the Godfather died in peace because he was in the garden with his, his little gods, his little grandson. Right. And, and so he had this peaceful moment right at the end. And I think that's how the book ends too, is, is you know, him having this moment of peace because he's surrounded by family. Yeah. And so that's one. Another is uh, we talk a lot about chasing excellence, right? And, mm -hmm being the best person you could be. If you really want to know what you're made of, if you want to know what your worst qualities are, if you're really up for having that kind of knowledge about yourself, how you, you know, how you show up at your worst in your worst moments, have a kid because that's that's going to show you when you are a complete shithead. And I'll give you an example from my life. I'm a grump when I wake up in the morning. I've always been a grump when I wake up. I'm okay once I get some food, get out in the world, moving around, I'm fine. But it's not pleasant to live in the same house with me and wake up next to me. And this is something that had I not had a kid, I could have breezed past this. I could have glossed over this and let this little emotional uh, weakness or run my mornings for me. But having a kid and having to interact with her in the morning has made me work really hard to try to overcome this little obstacle, the kind of obstacle that I easily could have ignored otherwise. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to know about that stuff, then don't have a kid. Daniel uh, dropped us a super chat. He says, uh, it's funny you said that my child hates me, even though I do everything I'm required to. And what is with the epidemic of single mothers? So I think the stat is 43% of kids are being raised by a single mother right now. Is Does that sound about right to you? I think it was 43 or 46%. It's pretty significant. Yeah, it's, I don't recall exactly, but it is significant. And replacing fathers with the state has a lot to do with this. Well, yeah. Um, you know, you as a man are no longer the head of your household. So Again, you know, that patriarch term gets thrown around a lot, but uh, you'll never, only guys that have been through the divorce machine that have been through the meat grinder will ever truly understand how powerless you are as a guy and how you're treated as tax cattle um, when you're in that position. Um, and, you know, some of these guys choose, some of these guys are losers and they choose to leave the women or, you know, these women are losers and they just get knocked up at a, you know, whatever event, and they just have the kid and some of them, uh, you know, they're single mothers by choice. They have a kid with a guy, they just leave them. And um, the state rewards that. It, does, it, it doesn't discourage it. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't discourage uh, poor behavior that's, that's not in the best interest of the kids. The, you know, the thing that happens today now is when we allow, when we have kids, we're basically saying, this child came out of my nuts and I made it, but the state gets to decide ultimately what ends up happening should um, they want to get involved. And they get involved as soon as divorce proceedings start or as soon as um, the mother of your child decides that she wants to get them involved. All she has to do mm -hmm. is point and sputter at you and say, I'm scared of him or he yelled at me or I think he might hurt me or he has a knife or guns or whatever and you're gone. I mean, you're hauled out of your own home in your handcuffs and that's that. 
There's nothing you can do about it. So live some, if you're going to have kids, guys, live somewhere where it's default shared parenting arrangements. I've said this before. There are certain states and provinces. Do your research. If you're going to have kids, pay a lawyer for an hour of his time, a family lawyer where you live, and, and ask him what the law says and find out where uh, default shared parenting is standard. And if you're going to do it, move there. Um, what about religious values? Does that does that have any bearing on, you know, the glue that holds the family together sort of thing? I don't know what the research says on that. My, my experience and my sense is that, yeah, that when you have this foundation that you're, that you become a part of, then there's a community that I don't want to say it helps you raise the kid, but it passes values onto the kid in addition to you passing on values to the kid. So the kid is getting a consistent message at home and out in the community when you're surrounded mm -hmm. by, by your religious cohort. But um, now I, I think it's probably easier. It's probably better, but again, guys, and thanks, Cool Hand, for the super chat. I appreciate that. Um, women always reserve the right to change their mind at any given time. And mm -hmm. women are very dynamic. They're fluid. They change over time depending on their age, what stage of the life they're at, even in, within the course of a month in their menstrual cycle, you know, their, their behavior can change. So you want to get your head familiar around that. But um, I had a uh, call the, the other month with a guy that was uh, living, he was Mormon, and he was you know, he had a couple of kids with his Mormon wife and she came from a good family and, you know, religious parents were intact, no issues with the family. Um, you know, always voted conservative for conservative values, for traditional values. And when it came time to get divorced during the course of the three years, she went from that traditional Mormon, good conservative chick that he thought would never change to a liberal feminist. <laughs> You know, her hair got cut short, got dyed purple, and she just took him to the cleaners and he never saw it coming. So you can't you can't vet for every possible scenario. It's nearly impossible to do that. It's like there's no safe way for me to say, well, if you take step A, B, C, and D, then you're going to completely eliminate the risk. I can I can give you somewhat of a path. I'll give you a bearing, you know, I'll give you a bearing. It's like looking at the stars, you know, when sailors would look at the stars back in the old days with those little devices, you'll get a bearing, you know, to kind of go down, right? Live somewhere where there's shared custody. Make sure you've lived together for at least a, a couple of years. You know, like you say, Sean, you know, spend at least two years together so you can vet her accurately to look for red flags. When you see red flags, do not ignore them. Abandon ship, go. Do not try to work things out, just go, in my estimation. Um, like time is is, is going to move very, very quickly for you. So if you want to have kids, find somebody else that isn't crazy. You can have kids with somebody that's crazy. It's just going to be way more exhausting and, and potentially more costly and detrimental to not just you, but also the children. So be very, very careful with that. I don't know. Do you want to yeah, beat on this drum some more? Yeah, just one last thought. I, that yeah. it's, a, it's a question that every man needs to answer before he gets serious. Don't be one of these guys who just takes it as it comes. Well, she wants kids or she doesn't want kids. So I guess I'll do what she wants. And I'll be very intentional about this decision and then find the partner that's going to, that's going to work with the way you want to raise children and the kind of father you want to be. Yeah. That's all, all right. So we'll leave it at that. Um, we're going to field some calls in just a moment, guys. I see a few of you guys waiting, stand by, don't go anywhere. I got a request here from a viewer. So um, I do these requests. Sometimes I do them during the course of the channel, but this is one that came in um, from a guy that um, actually mentioned the before the train wreck series. So I figured I'd read it off here. So if you want to make one of these requests, it's just entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash request. I'm going to throw up on the screen. Uh, help me out here with this, Sean, once I've read it through. It's, it's not that long. So uh, English isn't mother tongue. He says, uh, there's a problem in my life, as you may expect. I believe the train wrecked me. 45 years old, living in Southern European uh, city, employed on an international company and marketing department, no big money savings. About 10 years ago, I started living with this lady in my apartment, uh, brought by me 14 years ago before I knew her. So he bought the apartment she moves in. Uh, we never married in the paper, but by law, we have one fact union. I don't know the right term, but it's almost like we're married. I guess it's common law. We'll just assume it's common law. Yeah, I guess so. Um, Let's call it common law. We'll call it calm now. Uh, she's a foreigner, no family by her side, living in my country. She's employed in a part-time job, earning very poorly. So this is like that skit from that Eddie Murphy. Was it Rod or Lyris where she's like, I just want to do my share. Here's my $90. Well, you know, he's bringing in the bank and paying for everything. Her salary only affords to pay for one room in our city. 
not one entire apartment or similar. So she rents one. So she's renting a room from him. Interesting. Uh, she will have no money for food, clothes, etc. At the time, oh, okay, I see what he's saying. So she was renting a room, but had no money for anything else. At the time I met her, she was working two jobs. She was very professional and energetic. About five years ago, Wait, I decided. Hang on, hang on back again. He's he's saying that she is. He's paying her rent. He's saying if she rented somewhere else, correct, she wouldn't have any money. So she's yeah. living with me rent free. Okay, basically, yeah, yeah, okay. and. About five years ago, I decided to have a baby with her. Okay, here we go. Until there, until then, I was against having kids, and she respected it, so it was my decision. No pressure from her side. But when the child was born, we decided to we decided to her stay at home, taking care of the house and the baby. Okay, so she became a stay at home mom. Also, was planned once the child was three years old, she would start working again. We have the child in kindergarten near our home. She has accepted a part-time job because she prefers to go out later and put the child into kindergarten and go pick child back earlier to profit from remaining afternoon to play together in the park. Over time, we've become more and more incompatible. And for me, it is no more acceptable to share my life with her. Before, taking, before talking with somebody else, including her, I've decided to go to a lawyer in order to understand what I can do. Legally speaking, the news isn't so good as I already was expecting. This is kind of in line with today's topic. Uh, in worst case, if we go to court and don't have one prior agreement, lawyer and I are almost positive that she would that she could request a family house, which is mine. So basically, she would get his apartment, and that he bought with her money. Well, that's dude, like that's what happens when you move a woman into your house. She has rights to half your assets after a certain period of time. Uh, even if you don't get married, guys, everywhere in the world they have a theme called common law. And I think here it's either one or two years. I'd have to double check. But if you want to avoid that, you just don't live with her. As soon as she moves in, then the clock starts ticking, tick, tock, tick, tock. And the only way that you can avoid it, um, you'll have to ask a lawyer where you live, but a cohabitation agreement or some kind of prenup would uh, at least govern that somewhat. You'd have to find out exactly. But anyway, uh, the family house concept is defined by law as one place for her and the child to stay and paying me one very low monthly rent. I think that's him paying. Uh, once she has no family here, neither or any support, the court will allow this benefit to her almost for sure. The court will do the assumption once I have family here, parents and brothers, one easier way to have one place to live and leave my apartment to them to under 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 determined time. Sorry, I'm having a hard time reading this with a broken English. As far as I remember, she has one divorced girlfriend living only with her daughter. That's never a good sign if her best friend's a single mother. Uh, it could be the plan B for her to leave my house and go live with them with my child. Eh, I don't know, dude, you want your kid being raised by two single mothers, but not good enough for me because she lives in 50 kilometer far from city, which is bad to have 50, 50 parental guy due to kindergarten. Okay. Or plan C could be another divorced girlfriend that has one empty house for her parents. So <laughs> all of her friends are single mothers. Huh. <laughs> one empty house for her parents already died. And she doesn't have it rented, which would be a good option since it's not that far from me and she can manage 50-50. That sounds like the best option so far. After hearing this from the lawyer, I started thinking, what can I do to avoid the possibility of losing my apartment for several years? Must go and live somewhere else. Why do you have to let why do you have to leave the apartment? Why don't you I don't know why you can't stay in it until you guys sort out a um parenting schedule and a um agreement with what to do with the assets. That, that's what I did. Um, I can't afford to buy another apartment for her. The maximum I can do is pay for a rented room for her, but I do believe she has the option to not accept and prefer the apartment. Of course, it's a matrimonial asset. They're going to want to make sure the kid's taken care of. That's what the state does. You don't get to decide these things anymore once you're divorced. The state gets to decide these things. You can ask, but as you can tell, her girlfriends are all single mommies, so she's had the conversation with them, so she's going to go for whatever she can get that's best, right? The maximum I can do is pay it for rent a room. Okay, so I'm thinking to sell the apartment and rent something for me. What do you think about it? But should I sell the apartment without her knowledge? By do you can't, dude. She's going to have to consent to I, I mean, family law here anywhere, you can't sell anything that's a matrimonial asset without the other person signing off for it. The real estate agent makes you do it on the listing component. Um, so you can't do that probably, but check with a lawyer by doing everything on her back. Should I consult with another lawyer to understand my options? Should I do bluff telling, I will sell the house in order. Any other suggestion? You ever seen this before, Sean? I mean, the English is a little broken, <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Do you, do we know what country he's from? 
Uh, he said it's at the top here uh, for Southern European countries. So I don't know, uh, okay. Spain, Portugal, Greece, Italy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. This sounds like a mess and it sounds like single motherhood is contagious among this young lady's friends. Yeah. That's, that, that's something else that you guys need to be aware of. If you're, you know, if you're vetting a chick, if all of her girlfriends are single mothers, she's not going to value masculinity. She's not going to value a man in her life, especially if she knows how the state will take care of her if it doesn't work out. Right. It's a huge red flag, but again, we don't have a time machine. So he's asking questions about what do I do? You're asking legal questions, which you're going to have to ask your yeah. lawyer to clarify for you. So can I sell the property without her knowing? That's a legal question. Here, you can't do that. You can't even list a property if there's matrimonial inclusion to it without the other's consent. You can't do it. So I don't know how you would go about that over there. Um, but uh, your best bet right now, in my estimation, so you have equal time with the child and so you can have a shared parenting arrangement is stay in the matrimonial property. Just go to a separate bedroom or sleep on the couch until you sort out what's going to happen with that asset because she has rights to it. Uh, unless she doesn't, which you haven't said, I assume she has rights to it. And so you're going to have to divide it anyway. So it's not like you can sell it without her. No, I mean, how is she not going to know? You're going to have people walking in the house while it's listed. <laughs> She's going to know it's pretty much impossible for her not to know unless you move her out of the place. Um, you're, you're basically asking legal questions, but I guess the lesson in this one, guys, do some proper vetting dudes. Like, like uh, too many guys sleepwalk through their lives. Would you agree, Sean? There's too many guys that just yes. kind of. They don't make decisive calls when it comes to big things like this. They'll spend more time researching their, their uh, football pool or their hockey pool and who their fantasy league players are going to be and who they're going to trade for who or what their next car purchase will be rather than vetting somebody that they decide to have a, a child with. And it's wrong. This is the kind of stuff that goes down when you don't do it properly, guys. Anyway. Yeah, it's that. heartbreaking sleepwalking is yeah it is sleepwalking it doesn't sound like he went into this really intentionally about having a children like coming at it from as a young man from yes i want to be a father someday this is the kind of father i want to be so let me go out and find the kind of woman who's who's going to partner with me on that yeah and it didn't sound like she was a compliment to his life to begin with so i mean start start with something basic like reading Sean's tactical guide to women. There's always a link in the description, guys. This is, it's not a long read. You can get through it in a day. Uh, it'll help you vet for red flags. Certainly if all of her girlfriends are single mothers, that would be a huge red flag. I'm going to add that to my chapter in my book on red flags. <laughs> <laughs> I feel terrible for this guy, you know, and I don't mean to beat up on him because so many guys, why, why do we make these decisions? Because we, we have this assumption thinking. that we need to have a woman in our life. We're not really, th we're thinking about the wrong things and pursuing the wrong things. So many of us fall into this trap. That's why I don't want to beat up on the guy, but uh, yeah, don't be that guy. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> every man as a rite of passage before they're 20 should be forced to spend an afternoon in family court just to see what goes down. Just, Hey guys, come just, File them all in, file all the boys in, say you're 19 years, you're going to be 20 next next week, you file them in, have a seat on the benches and just watch what happens here for the rest of the afternoon, fellas. Okay. And then you're going to like approach, that. you know what I'm saying? And then you go and approach yeah. life with your eyes wide open at least. So we can't mandate out at a state level, but there's a lot of dads out there that a lot could of dads out there. certainly take their young men. Unfortunately, 43% 40, of dads are mothers and they're the only dad in the house. So they're not going to take you there, boys. So find a, find a way to family court yourself if you're 19, if you're watching the show today. Just just watch what goes down before you go and screw up your life like guys like this guy did. All right. Um, tough one. All right. We got some calls here before we uh, take these. Real quick, guys. A bunch of you watching right now, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Um, I know the chat is set to members only. So if you want to join the chat and help support the show, it helps Sean and I out a ton. Please consider doing that. You can participate in the chat, throw us a super chat. If you can't do that, at least do me a favor, hit the like button and share the stream so people can take a look at it. Uh, let's move to some of these guys in the waiting area here. Alex, I'm going to throw you on first, okay? Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Loud and clear, brother. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Um, this is very apt, actually, for me right now. I'm I'm one of the few happily married guys who follow this sort of, this sort of content. Um, I've been with, married to my wife since 2012, but we've been together since 20, 
2006, 2004, 2005, back then, that time. Um, and um, we're sort of getting older and we've spoke about having kids, but we've never really felt that we've been in the financial position to do it. I suppose we are now, but we still haven't reached our financial goals and having children would make those financial goals further away. It wouldn't necessarily be a problem. I'm quite happy where I am with work and life. Um, but every time I see my niece and nephews uh, come around, I just think, oh, crikey, do I really want that in my life? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, they're just, they're just, there's a lot of noise. It's a lot of noise. And okay. I'm happy when they're gone. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's just children in general or just my experience of nieces that's, and nephews. That's honestly what I felt when I ran into other people's kids. I was like, wow, these things are loud and they're obnoxious and they break shit and they're really distracting. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Carry on though. Go ahead. Um, I'm speaking to my wife. She's She wanted to have kids when we were younger quite a lot, but now we've got older and we're settled and we, we have the freedom to do what we want. Um, she's sort of erring towards no but i think if i said i really want to have kids you'd be like up for that um, how old are you guys how old are you so we are getting on i'm 39 and she's 37 um mm. so it's sort of at the time like well if we're gonna have kids it's got to happen very shortly or not at all um so yeah that's that's where we are with it at the moment um, so so you're asked tonight is should i have children yeah, exactly. Yeah. Should we do it? And my friends who have kids, they say, you'd be great. You should, you should definitely go ahead and, and do it. But, you know, having seen other people's kids and how hard they are to raise, I mean, they're, they're not, they're not something you should definitely just step into lightly. It's a, it's a huge life change. Let's start with the so marriage. So what are the two have, sorry, go ahead, Rich. What? Sorry. So I just wanted to start with the marriage. So how's the relationship? Uh, it's strong. Um, where we are at the moment, I'm actually living in Japan at the moment. She's Japanese, but I'm only here temporarily and she's back at home. And we're sort of just work has brought me back here. I, I just have a certain specialist set of skills that, that's required. Uh, I'm Sorry, so, you, so you're in Japan and where is she? In the, in the UK, back in the UK. Okay. So and I met her when I lived in Japan years ago. And, and how long have you guys had this long distance relationship situation going on? Uh, well, we've had it before. Um, and this time I, I've been here since mid September. Um, mm -hmm. she's coming over the end of, uh, end of, Oct uh, end of November. I'm going back for Christmas. So we're going to do about five trips throughout the year. Um, we spoke about it, whether we come back together or not, but because we've got the house, we've got pets, she's got her job. We decided that, okay, we'll just, this just this one year. We'll, 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 we'll tough it through. And I figured and that your it, family. Is her so family in it. is her family in Japan and yours is in the UK? Like, are you guys all Correct. in the same town? No, no, we're we're in total separate areas from our family. Okay, go ahead. That's another, yeah, uh, that's another factor. Sorry, if I just may say of of not having kids because I'm so far away from a support network, we'd definitely be pretty much on our own as well. I think it if makes that was a big like, difference, especially when yeah. you're older, because you don't have the energy, right? And uh, that's another factor. If I had family that were local to me, then I would um, I'd definitely um, it definitely be a big impact on, on that decision. Go ahead, Sean. I know you got some questions. What have you two done to try to resolve this question? We've spoken about it and we sort of came up to the conclusion that um, we could do it if we got older. Maybe we could um, adopt. Um, but I think the last sort of 12 months or so, I've thought, thought, thought well, if I'm going to have kids, I want them to be my kids. And we haven't really had that conversation fully, I suppose, since the, since I've thought that. Yeah, time time's running out for that, obviously. Mm. What else have you done? You've had conversations about it. What, what kind of conversations have you had? Like, have you looked at the question, what's it going to be like when we're 60? What's it going to be like when, we, when yeah. we're 80? If we don't have kids, what do we want to do with that nurturing energy? Is it going to go to nieces and nephews? Yeah, or is yeah, it going yeah. to be charity? What's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, we've, we haven't really, I suppose we need to sit down and fully talk it out. And maybe that's one thing we can do at the end of November when she's over here for a few weeks. Um, uh, obviously, we do have nieces and nephews both in Japan and the UK. So, uh, and we've spoken about how we can support them. But obviously, they, they're all quite far away. So it's quite difficult. Yeah, the state of ambivalence sounds like it's going to get old pretty quick. How long have you two been in this ambivalent state about it? Probably a long time, actually, probably about 10 years. Um, 10 it, years. Yeah. I mean, we've, because of work has taken me back and forth from Japan and, and we've 
come back and forth. I think we've finally reached a point in the last five years where we're actually settled down. Uh, obviously, I'm back over here now for work again, but I mean, this is definitely only temporary and probably the last time I will be back here. I can't imagine. I certainly, if 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 I did were to have kids and they would say, do you want to go back again for another year or whatever, the answer would be no, because I don't have kids. I'm able to do this right now. Um, but yes, uh, yeah, I think, yeah. I suppose the answer is you need to, I need to have this conversation with my wife and, and, and hash out all the detail. That's really what well, it boils like down you, to, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you two have been sitting in this state of uncertainty mm. for such a long time that I wonder if the state, the state of uncertainty has started to take on a life of its own. Mm. And I was going to say the state of we, uncertainty is, is, is basically saying something very loudly that you guys aren't paying attention to. What do you think it's saying, Rich? Well, I mean, if you're going to do it, do it, right? But it's mm. But it's been 10 years of talking about it. And, you know, you're getting to the point where you're getting into high risk pregnancies at your ages. I mean, more so for her than for you. But, um, you know, the school system today is riddled with children with all kinds of um, learning disabilities because parents are having kids later on in life. Right. I mean, you know, degrees of learning disabilities sh shoot up the older that you get. Um, so you can run into problems there. You got lower energy. You don't have a support network in your town to help you out with the uh, children if you're going to raise them. It doesn't sound like you guys have any conflict in the marriage, like there's any red flags firing up, which is fine. But um, I mean, if you're going to do it, you need to do it. If you're, you know, if you're not going to do it, then you need to just resign to the fact that hey, you know, you guys are going to be the couple that doesn't have kids and likes to travel, or they have dogs, or you guys, you know, get uh, cats, or you adopt somebody here, or whatever, right? Or just not do it at yeah, all, right? One way or another, I think you got to, my thought would be breaking this uncertainty because you don't want to wake up 10 years down the road and say, we didn't have kids because we never got around to it. You want to wake up and say, we didn't have kids because we chose not to. And this is what we're doing instead. Or Who, who's, um, who's, who's driving this question? So is this, is this you saying I'd like to have kids or is this her? Um, it's a bit of both. I mean, we've, we've sort of, come from polar ends where she started off saying yes you'd like to have kids and I was like well I'm not sure and now I'm erring towards having kids and she's moving away from it and mm. uh, and we're sort of we're kind of meeting in the middle on, on on feelings on it um to be honest I'm I'm either way still and maybe I might get older and regret it a little bit but looking at people who've had kids and gotten older it's it's only a minor regret it's not a major part of their their lives and I don't think it would be a major part for me. Uh, and I don't yeah, think that's a good point. Most now. people who, who, yeah, I, I agree that most people who don't have kids, they, they, they find a way to make it, a, even if it starts out as a major regret, they find a way to make it a minor regret. Yeah. I don't know of anybody who's despondent for years on end because they haven't had a kid. Some people are a pretty small minority, but um, what was I going to say? Are you going to be resentful of her if you two don't have kids? No, no, I wouldn't. No. Okay. Good to know. Well, figure it out soon, Alex. Right. <laughs> tick tock, tick much. tock, right? Yeah. Thanks very much for taking my question. All right, man. Thanks. It. Um, shout out to Crispy and Fred. Oh, I just, I just thought of a question. Out. Dang it, he went away. I this. Oh, he's still there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is he there still there? Go, I'm still Alex. Here. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Alex, Alex, um. Were you calling up hoping that Richard and I would push you in one direction or the other? Um, no, I, I actually just wanted to sound you guys out. Um, you guys have got a, life, okay. a lot of life experience that I haven't had. And uh, I just wanted to hear what your opinion would be. Because a lot of my friends who okay. have kids are like, I should. And I'm like, hmm. And then I see other people and think, hmm, maybe not. Um, I'm, I'm erring uh, towards it's not for me. So don't 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 do what other people want you to do. Like mm -hmm. like there's a yeah. lot of people living other people's lives right now. Like there's a lot of miserable ass people that have kids that'll tell you to have kids <laughs> when secretly they hate their lives and all they want is for you to hate your lives too. <laughs> <laughs> so you do what's right yeah. for you. Okay, make okay. make yourself your own mental point of origin and then you execute yes. on that and then just be decisive with it. Right. All right. Thank you for that. All right, man. Agreed. Yeah. And resolve this ambivalence. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Life's sitting on a fence is really uncomfortable. It hurts the ass after a while. Yeah. You know what happened to Humpty Dumpty. All right. See you, man. Got you. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks. Um, hang on. We got a guy that's a single dad in the waiting area, a uh, full time father. Let me throw him in. Was there a super chat a minute ago that I yelled over?
No, it's okay. It was it was it was just okay. a thrown out super chat. He didn't have a question yet, so I popped it up. Jose, okay. uh, you're muted right now. If you got a question, can't hear you. Still can't hear you. All right, I'm, I'm going to pull you out. Let me know if you can fix the audio. Uh, just put it in the private chat. I'm going to go over to you, Georgie. Georgie's one of our regulars over here. He's uh, he's got a question for tonight about kids. Fire away. Hey guys. So before I'm Ask the question about kids. I want to share my experience. You know, last week when I called, you know, I had this problem. And Sean gave me advice about reading this book called Happiness Trap. So I followed that advice and I started to reading book the book and follow this, you know, their specific exercise in the book. And I'm blown away by the book. You know, it's uh, like on the point, like really what I needed to, to read and understand. So thank you for that, Jim. Good. Okay, now I will ask this question. So you know, I have a grade in you know, bachelor's of economics, and that book uh, refers to that subject of having kids. So I, I thought about it, and my answer was, well, I don't want to have kids, but now I have this kind of question. When is the uh, right age to, to really think about the question? Like, should I have kids or not? Because I am That's a great question. Kids. So the question is, at what age is it best to have kids? What do you think, Sean? Well, you not, shouldn't be not, not have should. kids. Not have kids, but to decide whether you should have or not. Well, you should decide as early as possible. But the, but let's but let's narrow it down to when, like, what's the window for having kids for men, right? Like, let's let's kind of distill it down to that. So, what do you think, Sean? I think a guy. Well, we know that kids do best in a two-parent family. Right? Oh, hold on, hold on, Sean. Hold on, Sean. Your audio is breaking okay. up. I'm just going to remove you from the stream and just bring you back in. Hold on. Okay. See okay. if that fixes it. You got me. You got me? Nah, it's check, gone. Check, it's check. gone totally sideways. Um, click that link that I sent you in the email. So just leave completely and then come back in and see if that solves it. I'll have a quick chat with Georgie while you do that. All right. Um, so so my take on it would be this. Um, I wouldn't do it in your twenties for sure because you've got to figure yourself out. You got to lay your foundation. I don't even encourage guys to get into an LTR at that age, right? So it's like figure yourself yeah. out, lay the groundwork. Um, I like to say just spin plates, like don't get into, into any kind of long-term commitment, figure out how the sexual marketplace works when it comes to women and then kind of, you know, decide from there. The window really is like between 30 to 35, 40, the latest. I mean, guys can have kids at 50, right? I mean, your sperm gets a little wonky after a while, but it's not like it is with women where it's like after 35, the, you know, the chances of high risk pre pregnancy starts to go up quite a bit. Um, from my perspective, I'd, I'd say you'd probably want to do it between 30, 35 would be ideal for like, as you get closer to 40, like the last guy, Alex, you're kind of getting in the last legs, right? Like you're on the runway, you're at full throttle. You're either going to get off the ground or you're going to hit the brakes and turn around and taxi back out sort of thing and try to figure it out. So that would be my take on it. Does that make sense? I mean, if you had all the knowledge that you have right now about sexual marketplace and et cetera, would you get married or have children? Would I do it all over again is your question? Let's try that again, yes. Sean, how's that? You got me? Yeah, way better. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Georgie just asked me the question, would I have kids again, right? Like, if I could do it all, all over again, how would I approach it? I would definitely do some proper vetting, okay, and eliminate potential <laughs> red flags and headaches. Make sure you read that book. Um, I definitely make sure that I'm fully red pilled, but again, you know, hindsight's always 2020. Um, yeah, I think I would, I think the kids are actually a great thing, but it's a very, very risky thing to, to do. Um, and you'd want to strategize it. A lot of guys don't, don't, don't put any planning into it. Like I said, they'll spend more time picking out their fantasy football league players and what they will picking out. Um, a long-term partner, a mother for their kids, right? Um, there's got to be some some thought and shut out the noise because family is very selfish when it comes to you and your life and they'll tell you to do things that aren't necessarily good for you or for your relationship just because they want something from you. They want to have grandkids or something like that. They're not the one that has to go through the divorce machine. You do. And a lot Actually, of guys... my parents uh, often tell me that they're like... You know, don't like even bother. 
Uh, no, make babies as soon as you can, so I have I can have grandchildren. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, well that's good for them, but it may not work out well for you. I mean, yes. how many times do we have guys calling in going, uh, "I'm going through a divorce and it's not going well"? Like we just had a request from a guy I read out from Southern Europe. Where do you live in Europe? Uh, no, well, kind of. I live in post-Soviet Union country right now. Post-Soviet Union country. Okay, um, Sean, what's your what's your take on when the best time is for guys to have kids? Well, let's we'll start with kids being best off in a two-parent yeah, agree. mother-father home. Doesn't mean that other relationships or other arrangements can't work, but that one works best. And uh, that shouldn't happen any time before the age of 30. So kids have to come at some point after that. So you, you, you decide what kind of father you want to be if you want to be a father. You find you vet very carefully to, for the woman who is going to fit into your plans and you're going to fit into hers. And then you got a couple of years to get to know them and make sure that you can, you're reducing the risk as much as possible. Can't eliminate it. But so, so I guess we're looking at somewhere after 32, 33. Yeah. It's pretty much where I pinned that I pinned it between yeah. 30 and 35. Yeah. And, and up. So when, so I'll play a real table here, you know, uh, you know, as, as I learned in like happiness trip, don't get too attached to ideas. So I won't be like too hard, but, um, you know, when I thought about it, I, I wrote, I actually wrote down all the reasons why that it's not worse to have kids. Right, and I was, it's like four, four ways. In. I first is like random, like nobody knows what will be born, like dummy, stupid, or like very rarely like smart kid. So this chances of your child. Yeah, to be so. The second one is uh, don't want to invest my time and money. You know, ch children yep. are expensive, and even more, it, it take, they take even more time. Um, you know what they say: the average like, cost is to raise a kid from birth to about yes, university. Here, I, I think it's, it's something it's like half a million dollars. Yes, around that. Yep. It's different which country you live in. Okay, and the third would be even if you give give your absolute all. Like there is no guarantee that your child will be like thankful to you or will not end up just like your fr your friend or the the guy you mentioned had that had two daughters that turned out to be this kind of way, right? Be feminist, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and the fourth factor is like mother factor and related, right? You know, your if she did the fence, there is divorce, there is things. I mean, your you basically you don't have really that much power influence over your kid as a man especially and it just gets taken away from you like that simply yeah i think first three factors are the the strongest points here you can make a a, a fairly exhaustive list of many other things that, that kind of like follow that right through so it is what it is so just just be careful about it get your, you know get your awareness about yourself I, th I think you're asking good questions georgia you got to take next week off though on the calls I got to leave some space for somebody else, brother. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Thanks for hopping on. Okay. okay see, you. see you, man. Ciao. Um, okay. Let's give uh, Jose another stab at it. See if he's got his audio working. He said he switched out his headphones. So uh, where did he go? There he is. Add to stream. How you doing there? Give us an audio test, Jose. Yeah, yeah. You're on. I can't, I can't hear you guys. I can hear you, but you can't hear us now? Okay, let's pull you back out then. All right, guys. Um, not sure what's up with that audio, but let's throw. Oh, look who's back. Yeah, sorry about that. Do you want to hear the story? This yeah, is... uh, actually, I just got Kevin from sales back on. Now. <laughs> this is Kevin yeah. from sales. <laughs> so the, the, what happened here was the doorbell rang and the dog is doing the dog's job and, and going ballistic. And it's one of the organizations around our area that is hyper feminist anti-male they're they're a rape treatment facility but it's a front for a feminist organization so rich they're organizing and they're trying to invade our show what yeah guys we got to stop them <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> we need to sit kevin from sales on him or the wolfhound kevin what's up man yeah. hey guys how are you good good, good. how are you just barely catching on. I missed the rest of the show today other than right now. I, I've totally spaced it today. Yeah, this is the should I have kids debate. Yes, this is perfect for me. So I'm 38. Um, I'm still um, kind of dragging along my last relationship. 
Um, the girl lives in another state. And as far as like having a child with her, I feel like she's definitely the best option, even though we've had some trust issues. She's definitely worked on the things that have caused um, my trust to be bad with her. Sorry. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> Got my little puppy toy. Um, all right. So I'm, I'm 38. So it's like really close to I need to figure out. And I've always struggled going back and forth. Like, how do you know? Like, because I just kind of feel like there's always going to be trust issues with each woman's going to have her own set of things that like you can't trust. So, so, so Kev, this is the ex-girlfriend and she lives in another state. Yes. But so we still, let's begin talking. with why she's the ex-girlfriend and living in another state and why we're talking about having kids with her. So I'll just give you like the quick, you'll probably remember this as soon as I tell you this rich, but I spoke with you when Sean was off air, like, probably four months ago. Mm -hmm. And so she gave up her life for me in the current state that I'm back in. And she moved with me to that state, left her job and um, became a nanny out there, which didn't pay very much money. So long story short, um, I ended up finding that she took a little bit of money out of my wallet on occasion. Mm -hmm. and uh, it was like a 20 here and there, and I found out that it was basically just to make me me dinner on Sunday nights, <laughs> so I kind of felt like a dick, you know, about not knowing about this issue, but so I figured that out, and that really kind of hit me hard. It's like, why didn't you just ask? I would have easily, you know, helped you out with money. All you have to do is ask, but don't go in my wallet and just take it. Like, to mm. me, that really rubs me the wrong way, and then the other things... Um, at a point she was kind of posting a little bit too provocative of pictures for me after she already knew that I, I kind of set that boundary from the beginning. I was like, if you're going to be in a relationship with me, I don't want you to be posting, you know, sh booty shots or whatever. So <clears throat> I called her on that. She doesn't do, she hasn't done that anymore, even though we've pretty much been broken up, but we still, she's still kind of holding on to the hope that, um, and then she's, she's, uh, her financial picture is much better now. She started her own little side business. So she's definitely worked on these things. Um, and she's 10 years younger than me. She's really attractive, blah, blah, blah. I definitely have the, I guess, imprint you could say on her. I can, I can definitely tell that she, she would jump through way more hoops um, than I would to be with me. I know that sounds kind of. So she's alpha widowed now you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So she lives in another state as a nanny. Yep. You're she not wants together, to but she, she but she's like that. Kevin from sales. I miss you. Yep. What do you think, Sean? You said she's making some changes. How long and how consistent have you seen her? How consistently have you seen her working on these changes? Well, since I left her in the state um, about six months ago, she I haven't seen her do any of the provocative pictures. And she's really done really well with her business to increase her financial uh, position. Um, What's her business? She's a nanny. She does a nanny day. Her is her day job, and then uh -huh. she does the macrame stuff, like artistic plant hangers and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, she's but let's be honest. I mean, she's not Kevin from Sale. She's not oh, making no. the kind of bank that you are. No. Okay. Not even close. And to be honest with you, any girl that I've ever dated has never. They probably even won't. They've yep. never even made half as much as I do. So that's kind of. Yeah. Because you're the evil patriarchy, Kevin. You're yep. oppressing women, making $1 for every 77 cents they make, you terrible person. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sean, go ahead. How long is. So, how long has she been making these changes? Um, well, she. I'm trying to think. She's really kind of stepped everything up when basically when I moved, you know, she, I think she knows that if I see any, any of those type of pictures online mm -hmm. that I'm just not going to dilly dally with it just cause I, I don't have time to stress about it. I'm trying to focus on my business, you know, and I can't, I can't be dilly dallying with that. And then I also told her if we did end up getting, uh, moving her here, that if any type of financial thing was to happen again, then she would have moved here for nothing because I, I will have a zero tolerance you know, going forward. Yeah. Here's, here's what troubles me that you two are in different States. And so she's making these changes and I'm all for people trying to improve that that's mm -hmm. cool. But 
you're so far away that you can't really monitor is not the word I want, but I'm going to use the word monitor. You can't really monitor her progress very mm -hmm. closely because you don't know what's happening in another state. So I, I wish you two were in the same city living separately. So you could have a yeah. much clearer sense of what it is that she's doing to improve. Hey, I've tried, I've tried. Here's a problem with that. what um, Sean, Sean's talking about. So let's use an employee as an example. You know, the employee comes in, they got their best foot forward. They've got their best outfit on. They've taken a shower and cleaned up real nice for the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, they're competing against other candidates and you decide after vetting process to hire them because you find them to be the best candidate. Mm -hmm. Pretty much at some point, every single employee that you have is going to relax to the point where they just do the bare minimum. You know, it's the same thing with what you're dealing with right now in this long distance kind of conversation where she's somewhere else and she's trying to signal to you that, you know, she's not looking for external validation attention on social media, that she's getting her money right so she doesn't have to take shit out of your wallet, right? Like that's the representative acting right now. Like Sean says, yeah. the best way to proceed is live in the same state, not together, but mm -hmm. see if that behavior continues in that environment. And then the other thing that I'd be asking too right now is, talk to a lawyer in your state and see how friendly it is to fathers in divorce. Cause if it's hostile, move to another state. Yeah. I didn't think about that part. I know I always hear you talking about speaking to a lawyer, <laughs> but as far as like the scenario that we're talking about, I definitely was pushing for that. And she kind of just said, that's, it's not going to work. Cause the only reason she would move here, she doesn't even like the state. The mm -hmm. only th reason she would be, she would be doing what she did for me last time and giving up her, career i don't want to call it that but her job and her life she loves the state she's in now and i knew she would i loved it there too idaho um so what do you she, live i live in utah now but she, okay. we were in idaho yeah um so yeah she's she's like i don't want to do that and that's what i wanted i wish that she would do that so we could see you know how it's going to work and but she's like, if, if I'm going to give up my entire life, it's going to be to be with you and not to kind of. Well, like uh, Kevin, like you're the prize, right? Like take a look yeah. at yourself here on the screen. Like let's just give Kevin, you know, the full screen real estate here. This yeah. is Kevin from sales. <laughs> He's a hunk of hunk of burning love. He runs his own business, makes bank, right? He's, you know, he's an alpha stud. So like, you know, the point that I'm trying to make here, dude, is you're the prize. So let like, let her enter your frame, right? She's not bringing a very successful business to the table. She's bringing a side hobby, crochet, nanny and sort of thing, right? She's, she's got the ability to maneuver. Um, it sounds like she'll do it. It's, it's, it's just, look, you know, if you want to pursue this path that you're on, you want to make sure that you're not entering her frame that she enters yours and is a compliment to your life and not the focus of it. Because at some point, if you do decide to have kids and you know, she's going to pop out some, some babies, um, she's not like, it's not like her crocheting nanny and things going to do anything. Like you'll be the breadwinner, right? Like yeah. she'll just be the mom at home. I'm guessing like, is that the plan? That's probably what I would recommend. Like just because I can make money so easily, I would, right. I would want my child to be if possible, taken care of by the mother if I can check finances check check with a family lawyer to make you make sure your state's uh, friendly to fathers and make sure you get a prenup and a postnup because she's got nothing to lose the risk is very low for her but risk will be very high for you if it doesn't yeah. go well for you and in terms of entering your frames it, it needs to be willingly on her part if, yes. if there's yeah, you know there's works. little seeds of resentment I can feel them if she comes to Utah I think Utah's lovely but yeah I've been to Idaho it's beautiful too if there's little seeds of resentment, those seeds can can grow. And just in terms of risk management, the International Standards Organization defines risk. I like this definition. It's the effect of uncertainty on future plans. And you've got a lot of uncertainty here with her behavior and whether or not she's just making changes to shine you on or whether she's actually coming into her values and, and becoming the person that she wants to be. That's a, Those are two very different things. And the uncertainty of her living in another state, the uncertainty of whether or not she would come here willingly. Man, there's so much uncertainty here that if there's no reasonable way to resolve that uncertainty, then you know it's it seems like kind of a lost cause to me. Or not not a lost cause. It seems like an, an overly risky endeavor. Yeah.
And I would feel I'd feel so guilty, like if she came here and it just wasn't working out. I'd like, well, yeah. sorry, we kind of moved here for nothing. <laughs> yeah, that would she, suck. <laughs> the ideal situation is she's saying, "Kevin from sales, I I can't live without you, and I need to be where you are. I'm I'm coming to Utah." And just right, move, move with somebody else. Are you saying try to go with try to stay on that path? Yeah, and don't and don't limit yourself to this one girl. Like, don't have the one itis. Like, you're not in a relationship with her. Get out there and date. And you know, there might be somebody that lives five minutes away that has her shit together and is prettier, right? I, I mean, you know, that okay. is a better compliment. So, like, don't don't limit yourself to just her, right? Like, you're not married to this chick. Okay. Okay, guys, you're awesome. Thanks once right. again, fellas. See Thanks, you, Kevin. Kevin. Okay, see you guys. All right. Uh, I dropped the join link in the chat there. If you want to come on in and give it a try and ask a question, we got another 20 minutes to go. Um, again, guys, if you're enjoying the show, please share it. If you want to participate in the chat, consider joining. It's like $4.99 a month. It's like the price of a damn Starbucks. Get in there and support the creation of this stuff because people are getting some use out of it. Jacob. Hey, how's it going? Doing good, man. How are you? Doing great. How about y'all? How about you, Sean? Good. Great, great. Yeah, I just ha yeah, I have a few questions. Uh, some related to the topic, and some not. I'm assuming y'all want the, the related topic first. Yeah, let's stay on topic first. All right, sweet. Um, so you brought up um, still having kids, biological kids, and not being married. What was that called again? Shared parenting, or? Uh, sorry, you're talking about having kids together but not being married. Yes. Uh, it's the same thing. I mean, the state's going to view it as a marriage anyway. Gotcha. All right. And I was, that's what I was going to get to is in, in the event that that does happen. Uh, you said you brought up a post uh, prenuptial agreement, kind of like a prenup, but after how's that work out? Um, well, you're going to have to talk to a family lawyer where you live, but the mm -hmm. concept is you have a prenup, mm -hmm. which you sign not the week before, or you ask her to sign the week before the wedding. It's like set up many, many months in advance because you don't want her to ever claim that she signed it under duress because people were invited, the the photographers were booked, the band was booked, and she had to go through with it, so she signed it anyway. That's gotcha. where a lot of them get thrown out in court. So you want to do it like five, six months before anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of guys have found success with a postnuptial. Um, I get a lot of criticism from people um, from certain communities that say, well, they're not worth the paper they're written on and they're uses toilet paper in court. Yeah. Well, okay, that might be true if they're not handled properly or you have a law firm that's run by a bunch of Muppets that doesn't know what they're doing. But there's a lot of guys that have had success with postnuptials. And the mm -hmm. concept with that is you sign a prenup before the wedding and then after the wedding, maybe a month or so after the wedding, once you've done it, done it all, you've got the, you know, the honeymoon out of the way and you're back and you're you know, settled in. And again, you line this up before the wedding. You tell her that there's going to be a postnuptial. All that does is it just solidifies everything that you signed six months before. She just mm -hmm. agrees to the exact same thing, essentially again. You know, the rainbows and butterflies and unicorns are yeah. all gone and the excitement's gone. It's just now that that's all died off, she's also signed another contract that says, yep, I haven't changed my mind. We're staying the course with this, right? Okay. Um, but with you saying all that, I wanted to know – even with a prenuptial and a postnuptial agreement, would you would both of you even recommend marriage entirely, even with the two in, entail the nuptials agreements? I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, well, the pro see, see the problem with marriage is mm -hmm. the whole point of marriage throughout history. There's a great book by Stephanie Kuntz uh, called The History of Marriage. You should read it. It's a really good read. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like the whole point of marriage throughout history has not been love or the honeymoon or the wedding or any of that shit. It's been the acquisition of in-laws, right? Yeah. Acquisition of power, right? Yeah. It's, you know, it's been the acquisition of in-laws, influence, um, that sort of th stuff, because, you know, for a very long time, you wouldn't rely on the police department or the fire department to protect you is if you had a large enough family or, or you had influence where you lived in your village, um, you would be able to take care of things like schooling, law enforcement, if there was problems with land rights and you know, stuff like that. So it had nothing to do with love. Um, the problem with marriage today now is it's really just a party for her so she can invite all of her friends and show off. She's been dreaming about mm -hmm. this her entire life. She's watched all the Disney movies. It's front and center. I mean, Kit, like, Little girls think about this stuff from the age of like three up, probably. Yeah. So um, it's not 
it's not about anything more than just a party for her and then it involves the state more deeply in your life there's also notions of private marriages yeah um, so I, uh, I i'm sorry i didn't don't remember if it was in uh the rational male or your book sean where they talked about uh women who didn't get married would do those self marriages was that you sean I don't think I mentioned that. No, uh, you're talking remember, about women marrying themselves, like doing like it's like a marriage for themselves, and they just put it on just so they can have that. Uh, I guess you can say attention. I guess you can say where it's all, the show's all about them. Have you not yeah, heard about that? They'll get a photographer and go to the beach and and pose in their wedding dress and so forth, right? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, basically, and they're not getting married at all. They, they call it marrying themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's it, a little crazy. Like a that's bad spectacle to me. It's yeah, exactly. Nice. <laughs> no, a sad spectacle is a nice way to put it Brian. you're a lot kinder than i am um but i wanted to ask this isn't really a big question but you've been talking about it uh rich uh you're you have a book in the works yeah yeah i'm a very slow writer so be patient with me. <laughs> no it's fine i just wanted to know uh, i've read uh both obviously it's gonna rolling. be awesome though uh, that's what i was gonna ask what was it gonna be about <laughs> if you don't mind uh sharing oh, i'm gonna cover everything dude like i might have to break it up into into a different series, but, but I'm covering a lot of shit that, um, mm -hmm. like a lot of the work that, that I've done on my channel, a lot of stuff that I've mm -hmm. done, like Rolo even knows this. And he said this, like the basis for a lot of the rationalization that I do is based off his, his work, even mm -hmm. Sean's work. A lot of these coaching calls that I do, even the series that I do with Sean. So I'm just trying to make it as simple to digest as possible. Like I want yeah, it to I be know. a book that a young man can read and be like, okay, now I know what to do sort of thing. Well, I read both of them. I'm only 20. But um, the thing is, I wanted to ask. Uh, so I've read Sean's book and I've read uh, Rolo's, Rolo Tomasi's book. I just finished The Way of Men. And I wanted to say uh, I've struggled with depression my entire life. And after reading the, Rat, the, the Way of Men, I've kind of determined that the reason I've been depressed is because I haven't had that natural just like drive that he talks about in the way of men like the creating something ha building the perimeter and mm. other than you know completely tearing down society and like going on the lamb like red dawn type stuff yeah what would you recommend as a good substitute kind of like that he well, brought up the way video of games men, and stuff yeah the way of men's an interesting book so jack donovan's a you know, he's a very dynamic character, right? And mm -hmm. what he's talking about when he's drawing the perimeters is between us and them. Yes. And he doesn't like the concept of the empire of nothing, which mm -hmm. is what we live in today. I mean, globalism is essentially the empire of nothing. It's, it's um, you know, jacks of all trades, uh, masters of fuck all, basically, is what it boils down <laughs> to. So um, he likes the whole tribal aspect of having a local community of guys that he can rely on if the shit hits the fan. That's really all that that is. I mean, mm. um you and the problem with doing that in a family environment is you never you're 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 never going to be the head of the household so mm -hmm. long as the state has infiltrated family law and uh decides what happens with your kids and marriage and you know sides so strongly with the mother um you're just never going to be the head I don't care how patriarchal you are how many books you read how many conventions you go to that talk that talk about being the patriarch Nobody can can out patriarch or out alpha the state. When you start yeah. going through the divorce machine, you're at the whim and control of your woman, you know, the mother of your kids, and what she wants to do with family law. And it's mm -hmm. as simple as that. So you're never going to beat that unless you want to live in the woods and bonk her over the head with a club and you know off you go sort of thing. <laughs> but I don't think we're ever going to go back to those times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, one of the last questions I have, and this is relating to the rational male, I finished that book and I was awestruck. Uh, too many of my friends tell me I treat it too much like the Bible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my friends come up to me and say they have a problem with the girl. I'm like, here, have this book. And the ration, my version has just been torn apart. It's gotten writing and highlights all in it. Yeah, good. But, Pass it around. Yeah, no, exactly. I actually just bought my old boss uh, who lives in Utah now a copy and he just finished it and sent me an entire like novel of what he thought about the book and i haven't read it yet but yeah. the one question i have uh that's I, always been in my mind i actually have it written in my book um and it could just be just a dumb question but this matrix is there like some form of a neo to it like is there will there ever be some form of a neo to this matrix someone who does a sexual not sexual revolution but sexual revolution for the males 
I'm not sure I follow that question. Can you rephrase it for me? Ha have you seen The Matrix? I'm of course, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So is there someone, a Neo, that will basically not destroy The Matrix, but completely change it and uh, benefit society, make it more not female, male or female oriented, but how everyone wants it to be fair, quote unquote, although that's impossible per se. Well, you're talking about an egalitarian society and we haven't lived that way for a long time. Mm -hmm. But it's, you it's never going back to that. Fem fem feminism has such a strong foothold. It's, you know, it's a supremacy movement. It's not going to get any better for a long time. We need a complete reset, right? Yeah. So you, th know. you think it's way too late for that to even be a possibility? There's no time machines that's going to take us gotcha. back to a time where like, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, I got an email the other day and I'm probably going to do a live broadcast on this at some point this week. But this guy sent me a video of a pickup artist, Ross Jeffries, uh, an MRA, uh, MRA mm -hmm. slash MGTOW and a male feminist uh, from a talk show interview from 27 years ago. And the conversations they had 27 years ago are identical to the conversations we have today. Right. Really? Identical. Like nothing has changed. A lot of people say, well, there was a golden era where, where hypergamy was in check and, um, you know, things were a lot better for guys. Nope. I'm going to show you guys later on when I uh, do some uh, commentary on that video. Sean, sorry, man. I feel like I'm dominating this uh, conversation. Did you want to no, add not to at it? all. I was thinking about the question. It's an interesting question. Is there going to be a savior that comes along and changes the sexual marketplace? And my thought on this is that the sexual marketplace is like any other economy. It's the result of millions of individual decisions. In the case of an economy, it's trillions and trillions of individual decisions every day. But in, in the sexual marketplace, it's, it's slower decisions, but still individual decisions. And yeah, People are going to make their individual decisions and they're going to be swayed a little bit here and there by voices on one side or the other. Maybe it's Rolo Tomasi, maybe it's Gloria Steinem, maybe it's the MGTOWs that are withdrawing their, their capital from the marketplace. But all in all, people want to have sex, people want to pair up, people want to have children. And those are the decisions that are going to continue to run, thing and run things. And I, I agree with Rich. I think that feminism has a much louder, uh, much stronger influence over the marketplace, largely because it's being taught in universities in, in, a, in a very formal fashion. And, no, definitely. I'm yeah. sorry, Sean. I just want to say I'm in university right now, and I've noticed uh, that. Yeah. Ever ever since I finished uh, your book in the Rational Mail, I've just noticed it in all my classes. But keep going. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no. What are you studying? Uh, so I, the job I work at now is paying for my major. I am doing a major that only my school offers. It's called organizational leadership. Which is a business course or what? It's a business course, yes, sir. Okay. And how much of the feminist agenda are you seeing in your business classes? Oh, if you want a percentage, it's about like 40%. Uh, you, wow. not, at least last week, yeah, I had... Class now. Yeah, exactly. Last week, yeah. they brought up the whole uh, 76 cents to $1. And I, I, every fiber in my being wanted me to s stop me from saying up and saying, then why don't we only hire females then? Yeah. <laughs> yes. In a, in a business school, you should be asking questions like that, right? It's, it's, a, it's a clear economic incentive. Fire all the men and just hire women and save 25% <laughs> save on your payroll. Yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to say, but I'm surrounded by the, the school I go to is unfortunately predominantly uh, that sided. So mm -hmm. I just didn't want to get shot while leaving the school. Yeah. You're wasting your time in university, my friend. I'm sorry to tell you that, but man, I feel sorry for guys today. I do too. <laughs> I'm Brutal. not. I, yeah. But right, um, it was great to talk to you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks. Take right. care, man. All right, um, Josh, I'm going to put you on in a second. Before we go any further, I want to make sure I hit a few uh, housekeeping things. The channel sponsor, do, 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 Tactical Soap. Uh, grateful that Scott from the Grondike Soap Company <laughs> continues to support the creation of content like Before the Train Wreck playing to win and all the other stuff I'm putting out on my channel. Uh, just over my shoulder here is handmade pheromone infused soap. It'll give you a little bit of an advantage on the sexual marketplace. If you check out with uh, Cooper at uh, checkout, you'll get 10% off or just go to coopersoap.com. Uh, I'll drop a link in the chat for you guys if you wanna grab some, it uh, helps out a ton. Also, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can always book me uh, for a one-on-one -on -one call there at clarity.fm forward slash Rich Cooper. Richard Cooper, sorry. Josh, let's throw you in here. You got a question for us. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well. How are you guys? 
Good. Th- th- thanks for screening all the calls tonight, by the way. Yeah, no worries. My pleasure. I don't know what happened with Jose. He was communicating well with me, and then, I don't know, shit at the fan. Uh, but I don't my, know my question, I think it's for Sean. Um, <laughs> yeah. A lot of these guys are trying to figure out if they're going to have kids and at what time. But if you know you're not going to have children ever in your life, but maybe that's something you want or wanted, how can you kind of fill that quote-unquote hole in your life without children? (laughs) Yeah, people do that all kinds of ways. They'll do that with family members. Um I've seen people do it with charity, with actually going to other countries and doing something for the for, um, children in need there. I mean, there's, there's endless possibilities if you don't have your own biological children. Man, there's a whole world of need out there, and there's, there's no shortage of good things people can do. You can you can really help a lot of guys. Out. I, I mean, I don't have a son, right? But I mean, obviously you know, with the men's community that I run and all the work that I do with guys, like 95% of the views is all men. Right. So it's like you can have an impact on men's lives, even though you didn't father those boys sort of thing. Like there's different ways to do it. I think that you said that at one point that you do coaching with uh, disabled guys, too. Yeah. So just so just find some way to scratch that itch. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing that. And a lot of them are like between the ages of like uh, 12 and 16 years old, because, you know, with with my disability and particular that's when shit really starts getting real so yeah i've yeah. gotten some fulfillment out of it for sure yeah yeah just keep doing that man like you'll find it there cool yeah all right thanks guys thanks, thanks for your josh. help tonight josh all right uh so we're coming up on the 90 minute mark so we should probably make this announcement sean because we were talking before the show went live um we're finding that, that that the commitment to run the Before the Trainwreck series is quite great. Um, and we tossed around the idea, you know, how do we how do we make this work so that we're still able to give to you guys and not dr- like brutally drain ourselves? Because we both got commitment to family and business and we're taking time out of our days to, you know, put this broadcast out every Monday. Um, so I want to make sure that if we're doing it and if we continue to do that, that it works. So we've decided to do this every other Monday now. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually there's some super chats here. I got to deal with before I go to, so I'll make sure I hit that for you guys. Don't worry. Sit tight for a sec. Um, so we're going to do these shows every other Monday going forward now. So next Monday we won't be broadcasting. What I'm going to do instead is I've got Monday nights off anyway, and I'm going to work with my men's community in there. So if you want to, um, get more access to me. Where's the link for that thing? Where's my men's community link? Bump, bump, bump. There it is. Um, so if you want to get access to Q and a stuff, that'll probably focus more on the making bank because it's about chasing excellence. I know a lot of the calls we get in this show is really about, uh, trying to avoid potential train wrecks with, uh, the dynamics around relationships. So every other Monday, uh, we'll be on this show live, Sean and I, um, there m- might be times where I have to bring in a guest to fill his seat if he's busy doing something, but we'll be doing this every other Monday night now. And the Monday nights we're not broadcasting publicly. I'll be on my private broadcast on my channel. So if you want to consider joining that, it's just entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash community. All the perks are there. Take a look at it. Um, let me grab some of these super chats here before we go real quick. You got a couple more minutes, Sean? Yeah. Um, flute boy had one here. Thanks for the super chat. He said is opting out of marriage children due to the risk playing to win or playing not to lose. That's a great question. Actually. What do you think, Sean? I think it depends on what your values are. If you, if being a father is something that's important to you, then yeah, that would be playing not to lose. If it's not that important, then I guess it's playing to win. I don't know. What would you say? Yeah, I tend to echo that. It's, uh, it really depends on what perspective that you're approaching this from. I mean, the lens, you, the lens in which you view, that, you know, fatherhood itself is going to be how you're going to decide to approach it, whether you see it as playing to win or playing not to lose. Um, pessimist, optimist sort of thing. It's going for, you know, it's going for gold. It's just that, like, uh, there's a certain point in life. I think Aaron, Aaron Clear and I were talking about this on a broadcast. I don't know if it was on my channel or if I was working with him on his, but at some point you want to make sure you don't screw up your life. Um, and at my age where I'm at, I've already been through the divorce machine um, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a great idea for me. So I'm not, 
I'm not keen on it, but a younger guy, if he's got his head and his wits about him and he makes some good choices and he's vetting properly and he lives somewhere where default uh, shared parenting is there and he's spent some time you know, with a lawyer before he gets married, if he's got assets, he gets a prenup, um, then you're playing to win, really. I mean, so you just want to be careful about it. There's another super chat here. I can't put up on the screen for some reason. I can't find it. But Davi Furtado said, tips for guys who want to have three kids or more. You have any tips for that? Tips? What kind of tips would he be looking for? I don't know, but that's one that you guys should click through and call in on because that's because that's something there's some dialogue back and forth, if you know what I'm saying. Um, we've talked about a lot of tips in the show, so thank you for the super chat. I'm going to leave it at that. We've, we've, we've done the 90 minutes. Um, back in two weeks' time, next week I'll be broadcasting privately on my channel. If you guys are watching this from my community right now, I'm going to go private on StreamYard and I'm going to do a private broadcast with you guys in about 15 minutes. Just going to grab a quick drink and a break. Give this a thumbs up. Please share this uh, content with somebody that might need to see it. Make sure you invite them in to subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell. By the way, I, I, I got the stats on views on the series and there's a lot of you guys watching this unsubscribe to the channel i don't know if youtube's unsubscribing you or what's going on but do me a favor just make sure you hit the subscription button so you get notification when we kick off on these broadcasts any uh final thoughts on the debate of should i have kids or not sean i got nothing else to say i'm spent i think we covered it i'm spent too all right we'll call it a night <laughs> thanks guys see you in the next one